Hey guys, Austin here from Corrupt Carbon Works. Today I'm working on my class three rig for 2023. I need to put an ESC in it. So I figure I would make a video for you guys to show um, exactly the process I go through when I do my ESC. I know they can be intimidating sometimes, especially something like a Holmes BR Mini where it's just a motherboard and you need to solder all the wires on. With that being said, I'm going to fade myself out, keep talking, and I'll show you guys the process I go through as much as I possibly can. And uh, hopefully you guys learn a little something from it and not so scared to do something like this a little bit later on. So let's get down to it. I will talk about the tools that I typically use for this process. Obviously, you're going to need your Holmes BR Mini. It's my ESC of choice. And the reason for that is it is small footprint, it's lightweight, it's good up to 6S, no issues uh, on the power wise, but the only problem that you might have or people might dislike is that it does not have an internal BEC. So keep that in mind if this is gonna be a choice selection for you. Remember that you will have to add an external BEC for that, for your receiver and for your servos, servo winches, etc. So I'll get that out of the picture and we'll talk about some of the stuff you're going to need if you can. So guys, this is a small little compact soldering jig here. This is the one I typically travel with if, if I don't have a lot of room. It works great for like your connectors. You can put your Deans or your XT60s in there, no problem. If you're running bullets, you can put them up here in the front. You can see like it keeps its tension on you. And then it's got these arms here. You can put wire and wire on each side. It'll hold it in the center. Or if you've got something that just needs to be squeezed and held, it can do that. Great little jig to have in a pinch for sure when you're traveling to competitions. It doesn't take up a lot of room. Next, I would suggest if you can, if you've got something at home and it's going to stay there, you can do the uh, Beef Tubes slaughter station. I use this one a lot if you're just doing wires to wire instead of working with this little guy you know you can see the difference I can take the arms push them close have wire to wire going uh, to solder and I can raise them up super high I can't see it on screen but they'll go way up there that way you're not bending over or anything like that crazy so another great option the beef tubes slaughter station available at beeftubes.com great choice and if you got a metal work table it's cool he's got magnets on the bottom so it stays put stays in its spot this is aluminum on the bottom so that's a great addition to it also so we'll put these over here on to the side obviously have you some side cutters or some wire strippers and then it doesn't really matter the brand guys don't get crazy particular I've had these Lord knows how long, and or I can't remember. Might be Greenleys. I'm not 100 sure, but they've been around. They've stripped a lot of wires and such, and cut a lot. These are super nice to have if you got them. Side cutters, keep them in your box uh, when you travel or when you're going to a comp. Always good to have something that's sharp, small, and you can get a real precise cut with them. Soldering station guys uh, For this video. I brought in my little one that I take traveling with me uh, It's plugged in right now, but I will put a picture of it up here now And I'll explain it's just a off of Amazon. It's an Xtronic model 3020 Nothing crazy nothing. I think they're like 50 bucks uh, it has worked its purpose for many years and done tons and tons of wires. It has been a great setup. Uh, I have a larger one that's pretty much stationary in the office, but for this video, I moved this over here to the studio. Uh, when I do ESC, guys, I do this little jig here. So this is what they call a suction cup vise. My brother made this or gave this to me a long time ago, and every time I do a Holmes BR Mini, this puppy comes out just for that purpose. And we'll show you why a little bit later on. Obviously, don't forget your wire. 
these are available on Corrupt Carbon Works website. Uh, we do have a ton of different little colors. This is the neon yellow and black. So guys, with our wires, the neon yellow and all the colors other than black come pre-tinned. So that means that the copper wire inside has already been tinned and ready for solder to where the black is just your standard raw co uh, copper and needs to be obviously pre-tinned again or pre-tinned to start with. I usually go over the ends anyway with solder always to make sure they're ready when we go to solder on to the ESC or your connectors or anything of that sort. So we'll take those off. I will talk about this little guy here a little more. So with this, this one is a ball vise setup. So you guys can see that this can pivot this way. This can pivot, oh, sorry, wrong way. This can pivot this way, left, right. And then these are plastic, so nothing crazy. And then you can clamp whatever you need to in there. If you look inside the vise, it's got little grooves, which is great for holding the BR Mini. And uh, with that being said, I'll get one in there. Oh, let's talk about solder. Sorry, guys, I almost forgot. So I use the Kester's solder here. This one is, oh, what did, yeah, this is, uh, this is a 0 .02 thickness. So it's a little thin. You could probably definitely go a lot thicker. The uh, 0 .303 .03 or even larger will work just fine. And then this one is a 67 I think third or 6337 mixture rosin core. Uh, a lot of people use the 6040. I would probably use it too, but I bought this a long time ago. It's worked great for me ever since. This was a one pound spool, and I have soldered and soldered and soldered and soldered and barely even touched uh, how much is on there. So I always do that. And like I said, if you if you always get something thin like that, maybe you found it on a good deal, you can always kind of wire or tie it up, rope it up, and give yourself, you know, maybe double the thickness while you're soldering. So guys, the cool thing about this is once you place it on your table, you can turn this, like I said, it's a suction cup, and it will literally suction cup itself to the table. So I can almost... It will move the whole workbench now. So with that, it helps you when you solder because sometimes you got to give a little pressure, say, on it to make sure the wires and all that flow when you solder uh, to the board or anything like that. You want to make sure everything melts and then gets uh, a good contact between both of the items you're doing between ESC and wire. Let's get our soldering station up to temp and then we'll let it warm up we'll strip our wires i will show you how i do two of these wires here to get them pre-tinned and then uh we will continue on but for that like i said i typically use I'm getting ahead of myself the beef tubes slaughter station All right now that we've got you in view and set up, let's we'll strip our wire here. So nothing crazy about that. Make sure you pick the right gauge you're using and such for your ESC or for your wire. I like to give it a little bit of a twist. Now guys, remember when you're working with this, you don't need a whole lot of wire stripped off. So when you look at a Holmes ESC, these are your contact pads, okay? The little brass spots that you see there are copper spots. So when you put, get this out of view. So when you put, like say your silicone of your wire, butt it up to the ESC, you guys can see you've pretty much got a full contact pad there, pretty close, once it's soldered and been pressed down. And that's a good thing because that's what we're looking for. So this is about all you really need to strip for your wire, okay? All right, let's, we're gonna get two of our wires. Like I said, I'm gonna show you pre-tinning pre your wires 
getting them good and ready to flow onto the ESC. No problem there. Got a little silicone left on there from stripping. Make sure to get it off. There we go. Awesome. Twist the wires. All right. So now we've got both of them. As you can see, good to go. Let's clamp one up. Now I'm doing this reverse of myself typically. So hopefully, let me check, make sure, yep, everything looks pretty decent and focused for you guys. Now, like I showed you before, I'll just use this with a little tied up together strand. Guys, a big thing with your soldering iron, make sure your tip is good and clean. This is what you'll want it to kind of look like there. And then you'll have to touch it just a hair and then push on to the wires, not your soldering tip. Make sure you get a good flow all around. There we go. Look at that one. It is ready to go to the ESC. So that's one. You can see it all around. We're good. And then let's do the next one here the same exact way. Hopefully you guys can see that. Make sure. We're good. I'm just making sure. All right, let's do our next one. Make sure the tip is good and clean, scrubbed. It's got a little scrubby pad in there. Let me tilt this back so I can actually see it. You guys can see it. Same thing. Let's give it a touch. Keep it on the wire. Keep feeding your puddle, not the tip. Move it underneath. Look at that. All melted all between all through the wires let's get a little bit more on there because you want a decent amount when you go to melt we might have a little too much now but we're okay good to go take the extra off you guys can see good and pretend so good to go it's got solder on it i'll do the other two and then uh we'll just cut to uh, pre tinning the solder board okay so hang in there all right guys so now we're back we've got all of our wires pre tinned you can see black black yellow yellow obviously so with that we've got you in view in focus hopefully yeah it looks pretty good and let's start tinning the ESC so obviously clean the tip of the soldering iron you guys can see here so what you're basically going to do you'll have to touch just a little bit on the soldering iron touch the board and then feed your puddle on to the ESC let's get a little bit more on there I like to have a decent puddle for the wires to go to perfect go across here typically guys I would move to the other side of the ESC from the outside where I'm feeding the solder from but for camera purposes we're just gonna do it this way there we go just like that so now we've got our puddle where we need in the center good shiny spot and I usually work one side at a time so with that we can see even though it's upside down, this is the battery side. So battery negative and then plus. Hopefully you guys can see that down there. Maybe not. I don't know if I can pivot it anymore. But there's a plus sign right here. There's a negative sign right here. So let's do our plus side. So obviously that's going to be our yellow wire. Make sure the tip is good and clean and then let's get a wire 
wire here. I usually just hold the wire. That way I've got a good grasp on when it floods down. So this is the positive side. I've got a little bit of solder on the tip of the iron. Let's touch and hold. Give it a decent press. This is what I was talking about where you'll want to have something that is kind of sturdy like this vise to be able to press and hold oops, sorry guys hold the wire in place so it gets a good contact it's melted all the way around we are good there and silicone meets the side of the ESC so no wires or bare wires are hanging off of it and then let's go ahead clean the tip one more time do the same thing, grab just a tiny bit of solder. Let's go over to the negative side here. Now typically when you uh, do your wires, you'll have a little bit of a puddle on one side of the wire. So hit that first, give it a good press, let it melt. We're melted to the board now it looks like. Oh, hold it in place while we can. There we go. Now we're soldered on that one. So that side is good. Let's be careful. Something might be hot, but let's take it out. Let's spin it around. Hopefully it will let us clamp it again. Sometimes the wires will play a little bit with you, but shouldn't be an issue at all really. It's got a little groove there in the clamp. There we go. We're in. You guys hopefully can see it in the camera. So M plus, M negative, same way. Let's tin these up. All right. Same ordeal. Get a little bit on the soldering iron, touch the pad. It flows and sticks just fine. Put a decent puddle on there. And with these guys, this one's, these have got the chips on them. So let's move the soldering iron to the other side. That way we're not burning anything. Let's touch the pad, put a little solder. And let's feed a puddle in there. Boom. Let's feed a little more. There we go. Cool. Nice, good, shiny puddle. Good to go there. Oops, sorry if you heard that. That's the phone. It goes non-stop with orders from my great customers like you guys. And messages, emails, what have you. Let's get the other wires soldered on. There we go. So motor positive. We've got a touch of solder on the tip it's getting hot you can hear it melting it give it a good press make sure we get everything down and soldered there we go keep the tension on it you can even blow on it if you'd like good to go i just like cleaning the solder real good so let's do the next one a little solder on the tip you guys can see the little puddle on the wire up there. Let's go ahead and give it a press. Let's get it melted. Puddles have combined. Keep it in place. Let's move it over. I moved it a little bit. There we go. Boom. Just like that, guys, we have solid connections top and bottom let's take a look underneath here as you can see we've had a little bit of solder underneath that's not a big deal it just means we have a lot of solder on that one rest are pretty small which is just fine that can stay just like that that is not an issue at all so now you've got all of your solid connections we can look on the sides to make sure we are fully in contact which we are and give them a good tug nothing's coming off now 
you have a soldered ESC ready to go. Uh, minus obviously your connections and things like that. Let me get this out of here. So now this is your final result. So guys, at this point, when I do my ESCs, obviously I leave the, the wires long for a reason until I figure out where it's gonna sit in the truck, uh, how close the motor's gonna be, how close the battery's gonna sit, vice versa. But at this point, you're completely soldered, ready to go on this part of it. And now I would take this to my, let me zoom you out here, slaughter station and I would crimp a wire like this and then I would probably crimp another one over here like this so it would sit good and level and then I would conformal coat this side so you guys can see how this holds it I would do a coat of conformal coat let it dry do whatever you're doing the rest of the day come back and then do a, another coat trying to make sure you're good and clear yep do another coat I usually do two to three coats per side and then flip it over and do the other side when it's all said and done I would uh, do the same exact thing that you see me doing to this to the BEC and then heat shrink this separate heat shrink the BEC separate and then put the BEC on top and then heat shrink them together and then I would have a smash unit of BEC and ESC, still very small, compact setup, and ready to go for your lightweight crawler or whatever crawler you're running with a brushed motor. All right, so, oh, got my hat off. So with that guys, I hope you got a little bit of uh, knowledge or a little bit of view on how to do an ESC like this. It's not super hard, it's not super, or it could be intimidating, but it's not super hard. Get you the right tools, get the right materials. Uh, you'll be able to do an ESC just like that, just as fast, ready to go, be confident of your solder joints, be confident that, that truck's gonna work when you need it to. Uh, if you have any questions, please get with me. I'll try to help you out. I'm gonna put all the links in the comments for everything I used in this video so you guys can see uh, what the prices are and then remember guys when you buy good stuff like the slaughter station uh, something like the vice that you've seen here uh, the soldering station itself the tools those are all one things that you only have to buy once so once you get those purchased you're ready to solder up anything you want but with that being said I appreciate the love, support. If you like these videos, hit that like, hit that subscribe. I'm gonna make more of these as I go through a building process of whatever I'm building so everyone gets a little bit more information of what they can possibly uh, tackle in this hobby. You know, This is an amazing hobby to learn things that you didn't learn before and some of those things can be transferred to something else that you're working on, not just RCs. So soldering can go on any electronics that you need to work on. With that being said, thank you so much. We'll see you on the next one.